a windfall like a tax if the banks don't play ball on savings rates. What do you think? No, I think that they should just be getting on and making sure they pass that on to savers. I think there is agreement right across the board. That's what needs to happen, and it's time for action. Um, OK, so windfall tax, though, or not? No, we've set out uh, plans around how we would have a windfall tax in the oil and gas companies. We've got no further plans uh, of anything, anything of that description. I do just think it's a, a case of uh, the banks taking action and making sure they're passing on uh, those interest rates to save us. It's incredibly important. You know, when uh, mortgage rates goes up, when mortgage rates go up, uh, they're all too keen to pass that on uh, where it comes uh, to the interest rate, but not for savers. And I think that's a fundamental issue that really does need addressing. And I would say there was agreement across Parliament that that needs to happen, but the government really need to put them under pressure to do it. So what would you do to make them do it then if you were in power? Um, I think there is a lot the government can do where it comes to the regulator, but also the levers that they have in getting the banks in, uh, telling them what's expected of them, what we would expect for them to be doing and putting that pressure on. And, you know, I think it is important that happens. As I say, I think there is widespread agreement that needs to be the case. Um, and we back the government up on, on measures to make that happen. So what are you saying? Appealing to their better nature? Do you think they've got one? Uh, yeah, I, mean, I think the regulator has, has, um, has a role to play as well. But actually, governments of all persuasions have powers in terms of the influence and the levers that they can use and the, and the influence they can exert to make change happen. It's not always just about legislation and parliament. It's about the wider influence that you can bring to bear on decision making. OK, talk to me about education reform. Smashing the class ceiling is what your leader is going to be talking about today. Tell us more. How are you going to achieve that? So today here in Kent, Keir Starmer is making a speech about how we transform life chances, how we make sure that your barrier is no background to getting on in life and that we do break down those barriers, that class ceiling that, hold, that holds back too many of our children and young people. You know, what we tell our kids is that if you work hard, you'll get on in life, but increasingly that isn't the case. So we're today setting out a long-term plan, Labour's mission on opportunity to make sure that all of our children and young people get the chance to succeed. So from the early years, making sure we're getting a really strong foundation for our children, high and rising standards in our schools, and then when young people move on beyond school, that they get really great opportunities. I think our country's best days can and do lie ahead of us, but we need a government with really radical change uh, to deliver that, to make it happen, and to break down those barriers that all too often still exist. So give me some examples of how you'd do that. Well, one of the big ways that we know we change lives is through having a really great education system. And part of that is around teaching quality, the biggest uh, impact that you can make in terms of outcomes for children is the quality of teaching within a school. That's why I've set out plans for how we retain more teachers in our classrooms, how we have more teachers coming into teaching at a point at which we're facing a really big recruitment and retention challenge. So that's about raising the status of teaching, about all teachers having qualified teacher status and about additional incentive payments when they've completed their first two years in the job. At the moment, so many parents will know that the teachers who are coming through um, and not necessarily always the expert teachers in their field because we've got that really, really big shortage at the moment. And it's also about young people and our children having a really strong foundation at the start of their lives in the early years. That's why I want to drive up standards in early years education as well as in our schools as well. So much about what happens in education transforms lives, but we need to do much more as a country to give opportunities to all of our children. One of that, um, I suppose, teachers would say is paying teachers properly. We were hearing about teachers using food banks to get by. We had the Veterans Minister, um, Johnny Mercer, on the programme earlier on in the week. He was saying uh, that it's a choice to use a food bank, certainly when it came to the armed services. Um, what do you think? I don't think uh, use of a food bank is a choice that anyone wants to make. And I know when I've spoken to people uh, in my community in Sunderland who've been using food banks, they often find it incredibly demeaning. That, I mean, they, sh they shouldn't because it's through no fault of their own. But they don't want to be reduced to handouts uh, and from charity. I mean, the people that work in our food banks and volunteer are absolutely amazing and they're doing all they can. But I don't want to be in a society where people who do the right thing, who work hard, have to depend on the charity and goodwill um, of strangers in order to get on. And sadly, we've seen a massive growth in the number of food banks right across our country. 
partly because wages haven't been keeping up, because we haven't had growth over these last 13 years. And I do think it is shameful that in modern Britain, that's the state of affairs that we've got to. And we, you know, we need to see that shift across society. Um, and yes, of course, I want to make sure that everyone is properly supported and properly rewarded when they're doing uh, their work. OK, just before I let you go, um, let's talk briefly about AI, something that we're talking about a lot on Sky News um, today. Do you think AI could do your job? <laughs> I don't know about that. I think AI does have the potential to uh, open up opportunities in the education field more widely. Uh, I think there are opportunities there, as well as the potential for risks that we need to mitigate against. But I think things are moving uh, very fast. And certainly when I've spoken to, to experts in the field who are, who are working in this day to day, they say the pace of change, even for them, um, is incredibly rapid. And I think there is a role for government in making sure that further development and change is properly regulated and that we're making sure there aren't unintended consequences from what could be you know, really transformational in many ways in terms of delivery of public services. Yeah, but you're not here with me this morning. How do I know it's really you? Well, I, th I would say that's part of the challenge, actually, because <laughs> in the absence of regulation, um, it, you know, I can, I, I can ask you can ask me some questions that only I could answer if you really want some proof. But I think that is the the challenge around regulation, around making sure that what we are seeing, uh, we can be absolutely confident of its provenance. And and there have been examples I know more recently where. Uh, where there have been kind of, you know, deepfake technology used to, to misrepresent. So it's a challenge for governments across the world. Um, but I do think we need to see uh, working with our partners internationally to get kind of clear regulation about how we do use okay. this new technology, which I think has amazing potential, but risks alongside it too. What was the name of your first pet? <laughs> well, you wouldn't know the answer, me. so I'm going to answer that right question, but you still, right know, you still wouldn't know it's... Anyway, that's a security question, isn't it, on all, these, uh, exactly on all these websites, exactly. so I'm not going to reveal that on... You passed the test, well done, program. Bridget. It's good to talk to you. Thanks very much indeed for joining us. Thanks a lot.